Greetings, and welcome back to World of Monsters. I'm Monster Master Arthur, and if this is your first time here, then yes, we are everything monster. So if that's your kind of thing, I suggest you subscribe, or give this video a full go and see how you feel afterward. Now before we embark on this chronological journey of werewolves on screen, there are some rules we need to clear out first. This video will only feature full-length films, as well as short films, not TV series and alike. And that's it. Enjoy. The Werewolf, 1913. This is the first movie ever to feature a werewolf. And not only that, but a transformation as well. As a Navajo woman learns how to transform herself into a wolf. Unfortunately, the film was destroyed along with many others during a fire in 1924. The White Wolf, 1914 also known as The White Hunter, is another Navajo inspiration that has unfortunately been lost in time. In it, a Native American medicine man has the ability to change himself into a wolf. Le Loup Garou, or The Werewolf, 1923, a French production and another lost silent film. It was based on The Wolfman novel by Alfred Macard. The story is about a falsely convicted man rather than a literal werewolf. Wolf Blood, A Tale of the Forest, 1925. Another silent film, but the first of the old to have survived to this day. Having wolf blood coursing through his veins, a man begins to hallucinate that he himself has become a wolf. The first instance of clinical lycanthropy presented in a movie. Hunted People, German translated title, or The Werewolf as translated from French, 1932. Like the 1923 production, this one too was based on the Wolfman novel, but yet a different retelling of it, and the first talky, quote-unquote, werewolf film. Talky meaning it was produced with audio that coincided with the motion picture. It features no actual werewolf, but rather a wrongly convicted protagonist. Werewolf of London, 1935. The first werewolf film to feature a bipedal human-wolf hybrid monster, and the first to present the idea on screen that the full moon plays a fundamental part in the transformation process. The Wolfman, 1941. And here we have it, the most famous of ancient werewolves of film, or more accurately put, Wolfmen. The Wolfman was a great and everlasting addition to the monsters of Universal Studios. As fans caught sight, every decade became filled with werewolf media from then on. Walking on his tiptoes, the digitigrade leg concept on a humanoid was first loosely put into action. The Mad Monster, 1942. A little less beastly than our previous film, this wolfman's facial features retained many of its human features, such as the nose and exposed pale cheeks. The Undying Monster, 1942. Just look at that drop! This wolfman is little more than just a fuzzy person, but he is indeed the fuzziest to this point, other than the actual full wolf werewolves, of course. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, 1943. Not much is new here, some aesthetical fur improvements, but hey, what happened to the Digitigrade Foot Act? I guess you won't have to worry about this half beastie sneaking up on you. Lou de Merfagneur, 1943. The second French movie on our list, but the first to feature an actual werewolf, albeit the full wolf shapeshifter kind. Looking closer at the fur, seems a German Shepherd was or were used instead of actual wolves. The Return of the Vampire, 1943. This wolfman outfuzzied the Undying Monsters version of 1942. Reminiscent of the original Wolfman movie, he sports a blackened nose with wolfish ears never before seen on a werewolf hybrid like this. If only more attention had been put on the neck. Cry of the Werewolf, 1944. Another full human to wolf type situation with what appeared to be dog or dogs in filming rather than actual wolf or wolves. Although it could be a hybrid. Hybrid. You just never know. House of Frankenstein, 1944. Universal Studios creation is back for the third time. Although lesser groomed than in this previous showing, Dr. Frankenstein could be to blame for that. We do get a closer, clearer shot of the great little practical details on the face and hands. Idle Roamers, 1944. And who's this cheeky fella? If this werewolf slash wolfman looks more comedic to you, well then it's very well that he should. As he quote unquote terrorizes Curly, Larry, and Moe, that's right, the Three Stooges. 
Hmm, interesting special effects approach with hair clearly at odds, separated from fur by the naked forehead. Steelwool! House of Dracula, 1945. Guess who's back? Twice the fur and half the screen time. Oh well, at least he seems more bright-eyed. She-Wolf of London, 1946. Well, she's the werewolf, but unfortunately the actual werewolf form is never shown. What a shame. Blood. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, 1948. And once more, before the decade ends, we go from horror to zany. Our universal wolfman comes back with slight changes that I appreciated, such as the curvature of the indentation running down the center of the nose, and the more crude, mangy overall look. The Werewolf, 1956. And what a great start for this fifth decade. A glint of insanity, a suit, and a forest. A proven formula. Let's fight, Daughter of Dr. Jekyll, 1957. Well, can't say quite as much for this one. Just a bit more hair and tooth than your usual psycho. Although this film was the first to bring up the term human werewolf. Werewolf, wolfman, and now human werewolf. Hmm. I was a teenage werewolf, 1957. Look at them teeth. It was a hot release, with the youngest wolf, quote-unquote, man, to date. That's a good-looking mane. The white strips complemented his appearance well, looking more edgy, especially with the oversized, gnarly fangs. El Castillo de los Monstros, 1958. The beast throughout has been lessened, and has a somewhat goofy look, being just another monster in this flick. He was nothing amazing, but he did indeed have character. El Hombre y el Monstruo, 1958. Well, if you thought the previous one couldn't get any sillier. A fresh take on Wolfman special effects? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one in the comments. Scary can indeed come in various forms. How to Make a Monster, 1958. A little older, we have the return of the teenage werewolf. Good to see he retained the elongated ears and skunky hair. La Casa del Terror, House of Terror, 1960. The 1960s again start flat-faced, with large ears, pronounced bottom canines, and yet a new take on the nose. An improvement on the original Universal Studios Wolfman? It seems to work with those outstretched eyebrows. The Curse of the Werewolf, 1961. Our first colored werewolf movie that fortunately took advantage of the new technology. Eyes turned blue, body covered in whitening fur, and tastefully added facial features that were not overdone, yet expressed the monster within well. Idyllic choices that created a werewolf great enough to stand the test of time. Werewolf in the Girls' Dormitory, also known as Lycanthropus, 1961, back to black and white. A very subtle take on the Wolfman's appearance, enough so that he could be taken as a vampire, especially within the movies of the 21st century. The good? Aesthetically alright, with nothing really ridiculous to the design. Beauty and the Beast, 1962, transforming during full moons and very reminiscent of Universal Studios' original Wolfman, we won't be accepting every monster of Beauty and the Beast, but for this human changeling we'll make an exception. An interesting pairing of savage and elegant. Frankenstein, the Vampire and Company, 1962, arguably the worst design to this date? Stiff, uninspired fur patching, and comical eyebrows. Obviously, the Wolfman here is just that, a mere part of the company. House on Bear Mountain, 1962. Surprisingly, even this semi-adult movie has a better Wolfman than the previous film, though not much, as probably the most monstrous thing about him is his towering height. No, I'm not the fuzz. I'm Jimmy Scott. Samson, or Santo, versus the Vampire Women, 1962. Santo is at it again as he reveals and battles the werewolf upon the ring. Overall, not bad effects, nothing really new. The bare body is of course a letdown, but for this type of film and monster design, it somewhat works. Improving his attacks could have really helped the scene. 
Santo or Samson in the Wax Museum, 1963. And here our adventures with Santo take us to a wax museum where we encounter a couple of the were beasties. Again, the effects have only taken place on the face, but it's nice to see the variety. Yaban Ren Lang, also known as Midnight Werewolf, 1963. Probably the first Asian lycanthrope film. Nothing impressive, another fairly fresh take on the beastie that is slightly suggestive of the Japanese oni, or demons. The predominant unibrow was certainly a first. Face of the Screaming Werewolf, 1964. This movie is a merged combination of Mexican movies La Casa del Terror and La Momia Azteca, with minimal new footage to better sync the two. Hence we see Lon Chaney Jr.'s Wolfman again. Literally nothing new on that behalf here. Ursus e Tarora dei Kirgisi, or Hercules, Prisoner of Evil, 1964. This Italian flick honors the werewolf as a worthy opponent of Hercules, though the wolf part is once again ambiguous as he could just as well be a werebear. The concept itself is a hideous, hairy, human changeling. Dr. Terrors, House of Terrors, 1965. Attractive title with an average at best production. The film is divided into five mini-stories that take place within the house, one of which has the werewolf, who is unfortunately barely visible in the film, and takes on the full wolf form in nature when completely transitioned. El Charo de las Calaveras, or Rider of the Skulls. 1965. Here a cowboy faces many monsters, among them one which can give all other wolfmen a run for their money as to being either the furriest and or the longest furred. Actually in clarity the face is quite freaky and with what's going on there that unibrow conforms well. El Demonio Azul, or Blue Demon, 1965. Another Mexican wrestler hero, like Santo, takes upon a lycanthrope that really had some things going for it as far as facial special effects. The rest of the body and head in particular didn't follow in well, but it seemed they were headed in the right direction with this one. La Loba, or The She-Wolf, 1965. Finally, we have a visual representation of a female werewolf hybrid form type, a wolf woman. Both the male and female become covered in hair and fur, her with more and much longer portions, but him with more facial coverage. Otherwise, the faces remain quite mundane. Orgy of the Dead, 1965. With what the actual movie is, the Wolfman is quite aesthetically pleasing, possessing more of the white streaks we first saw in the Teenage Werewolf of the 1950s. I would have liked to have seen more of this, though it's possible the hair might subtract from the scariness. Gallery of Horrors, which can also be found under a variety of other titles, 1966. A low-budget disappointment with very brief, unimpressive werewolf footage. Monster Go Home. 1966, the monster's first full-length film, and not just that, but in Technicolor. The werewolf here being, of course, the boy Eddie Munster. Nothing too flashy or, shall we say, furry, but the strong widow's peak and pointy ears made for a trademark look not to be forgotten. Mad Monster Party, 1967. Ah, here it is, the first film to feature a truer werewolf rather than wolf-man slash woman. Meaning by some standards, more wolf than human. First film indeed, but not the first live action, as this was stop-motion puppetry. La Marca del Hombre Lobo, 1968. Also known as Frankenstein's Bloody Terror in the slightly altered English-dubbed version. Fanged, dark, and intense. It was this movie that started it all for Spanish actor Paul Nashi. As for the next few decades, he was the Wolf Man. Blood of Dracula's Castle, 1969. Although there was no visual of a werewolf in the theatrical release, TV's version did present us with something. Albeit a masked creation, this concept would have been awesome to see done well, especially for the time. The Maltese Bippy, 1969. A rare werewolf find as was the previous. This one also seems to be inching toward a more animal-ish character with that pronounced muzzle. For a comedy, this creation's design was actually clean and memorable. Cry of the Banshee, 1970. 
For the brief moments we actually get to see the werewolf in full form here, it is nothing more than an unarticulated mask. The design decent, a monstrous humanoid reminiscent of a troll or ogre. El Bosque del Lobo, or The Encinas Woods, 1970. Featuring a lycanthropic mental disorder rather than scenes of literal wolfman, the movie was based on the true account of Manuel Blanco, Roma Santa, known as the Werewolf of Alares, Spain's first documented serial killer. Los Monstros del Terror, or Assignment Terror, 1970. Paul Nashi returns as the Wolfman, the less beastly here as he lacks the sharp ears and looks more like just a very hairy humanoid rather than blend of man and wolf. Santo el Enmascarado de Plata y Blue Demon contra los Monstros, or Santo and Blue Demon against the Monsters, 1970, with a fresh new take on the Wolfman. Well, maybe fresh isn't the greatest adjective here as he appears as an older fellow, actually just about that, an aged man with a beard, enlarged ears, and teeth that just won't fit in the mouth. But for some reason, I rather like this take. The Beast of the of Yellow the Knight, Yellow 1971. Knight. Werewolf? You be the judge. This beastie does indeed transform and its color and attitude certainly fit in here. However, the overall effects appear more as a fanged burn victim than a furred terror. Monstrous, but nothing to howl at. La Noche de Walpurgis, or The Werewolf vs. The Vampire Woman, 1971. Oh yeah, fearless and dark, complete with numerous large sharp teeth. Really, what more can you ask for, especially for the early 1970s? Oh, Mem Lobo, 1971. Given that quality images or clips of this Wolfman are hard to find, the design appears like a lesser version of our previous movie's Wolfman, with the addition of large ears. Werewolves on Wheels, 1971. With werewolves designed better than the title, this Werewolves on Wheels features our best female wolfie to date. Which doesn't say much, but it actually is pretty good. Dr. Jekyll y el Hombre Lobo, or Dr. Jekyll and the Werewolf, 1972. Intricate fur workings, attractive canines, but nothing to really shake a stake at. Hmm. Dracula contra Frankenstein, or Dracula vs. Frankenstein, 1972. This Wolfman definitely holds more humanity than not, and considering this is a monster movie, it's probably not a good thing. La Furia del Hombre Lobo, or The Fury of the Wolfman, 1972. Once again, Paul Nashi as the Wolfman is looking pretty alright, if not great. Within this fury of his, we are also rewarded with a female werewolf whose teeth are even more oversized than his, which really just added to her cuteness. Mad 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 Monsters, 1972. This animated feature presents us with a gorilla-ish werewolf. It's nice to see the concept with a bit more girth to it. Moon of the Wolf, 1972. A slight different reddish wolfman here. A little too gentlemanly? It doesn't seem that just painting the nose area black worked out too well here. And what? No claws. Rubbish. Santo contra las lobas or Santo vs. the She-Wolves, 1972. Well, the He-Wolves look as you'd expect by now, but the She-Wolves, to say the least physically, they just didn't do the title justice for me. The rats are coming, the werewolves are here, 1972. Ooh, what's that? Okay, never mind. Disappointing for this day and age. Chabelo y Pepito contra los monstruos, 1973. As for the Wolfman himself here, it's a battle of what's worse, how short his screen time was, or how fake he looks. Seems the former actually helped. El Retorno de Walpurgis, or Curse of the Devil, 1973. Unlike its predecessor, there is a bit more rubberiness in the close-ups of the Wolfman here, and it just seems to lack that ruggedness of being an enraged beast. O Camino Moncho, or Horror of the Wolf, 1973. Interesting. It seems we're pushing out the silhouette of the human face here. A great step forward though, looking at the rest of the body. As a whole, this part furball seems to even out as nothing that special yet. 
Santo y Blue Demon contra Dracula y el Hombre Lobo or Santo and Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Werewolf, 1973. Doesn't look as if the 70s pushed much progression upon either of the wolfmen here. It's just Santo and his boy battling some furball-headed humans. The Boy Who Cried Werewolf, 1973. Nice. Not extreme on the ferocity, but look at that snout. Now we're talking. That hybrid point is finally beginning to center or even shift more toward wolf rather than human. Although he remains clothed, you can see the long fur sprouting out of his sleeves. I especially appreciate the lengthiness in conjunction with the brightness of it. Considering how often werewolves are shot in the dark, I think it works particularly well. The Mini Monsters, 1973. Compared to live action Eddie, I'd say he falls a little short here. He does seem older and taller, but where is that gothicness? Without the extreme paleness, it's just not him, but rather a random kid with big ears. Werewolf of Washington, 1973. Hmm, not bad. Nice and furry. Slightly different tones between the skin and hair. Really just overall lacking a little in quality. Wait! Blood, 1974. For what's visible, barely average for the time period. Scream of the Wolf, 1974. Another wolf or dog werewolf movie. Actual animal, no fakes, and overall, not a bad movie. The Beast Must Die, 1974. Aside from the story and mystery, for the most part what we get here is a full wolf form utilizing an actual canine of sorts. Works for realism and fogging the mystery, but was this animal actor the best choice as the wolfiest for the part? The Deathhead Virgin, 1974. The apparent werewolf? The best or only good thing here are the white-out eyes. La Maldición de la Bestia, or Night of the Howling Beast, 1975. A good-looking wolfman filled with facial fur and aggression, and a tidbit of compassion. Las Alegres Vampiras de Vogel, 1975. Nothing great here, a little reminiscent of a Sasquatch with big bottom canines. Le Bet, or The Beast, 1975. Funky Werewolf? Actually, he's not that bad, and he does sport an elongated muzzle. Please don't tell me it's down to a strange adult flick to introduce us to the most animalistic werewolf thus far. Legend of the Werewolf, 1975. Okay, so the final werewolf or wolfman form here with the white hair is quite nice. It looks to be inspired by Curse of the Werewolf 1961's Wolfman. I do like the widened nose, large ears, and long fur running back on the head, but the quality is certainly not above average for the era. Gente medo jima bizomen, or Who's Afraid of the Werewolf, 1975. Not much to say here, the werewolf's appearance is brief and appears like a generic, scary monster Halloween mask. The Werewolf of Woodstock, 1975. Well, at least we see quite a snout here, even though the special effects work is not believable. Seems we are more and more headed toward that wild and crazy beast werewolf concept some of us hunger for. Urufu Guy, Moero Ogami Otoko, or Wolf Guy, 1975. The last of a werewolf clan solving crime. Other than his enhanced physical power, nothing monstrous here. La Lupa Manara, or Werewolf Woman, 1976. Huzzah! Another female wolfie, and with full body practical effects. On close-up, she isn't anything too great, but seeing wild contacts being used this early in cinema is always a pleasure. Also nice to see the overall change in skin tone. Nazareno, Cruz y el Lobo, or Nazareno Cruz and the Wolf, 1976. Full wolf, final form type werewolf, utilizing an actual dog, or wolf, or hybrid? Providence, 1977. No judgment on the movie itself here. The wolfmen are men with some fur on their faces. Is it even enough to be considered fur? Also, its layout isn't too logical. Areas that would normally be uncovered are covered, and areas that would be aren't. Dervaza, 1978. Hardly wolf there. Mostly just a large humanoid beast monster. More fitting for a role as Mr. Hyde. Death Moon, 1978. Not a bad hairy man, Wolfman. It would have been nice if there was more clarity to his presentation. Nonetheless, nothing original or impressively done enough for, for an, an audience, audience howl. 
The Wolfman, 1979. To beautifully end the decade, we have this remake. The Wolfman himself doesn't look like much of an improvement upon the original Universals, mostly just far furrier. Too bad considering it's been almost 40 years since. Full Moon High, 1981. Well, 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 another Teen Wolf type situation. But somewhat lacking in much of actual wolf here. A soft start for the decade, but I have hope. An American Werewolf in London, 1981. What many of you have been waiting for, and rightfully so. Finally, we have a full-fledged werewolf. Werewolf, not Wolfman. Not only is it terrifyingly grisly and barely features any humanity to it, it is actually the first werewolf to this point that is a quadruped altered version of a werewolf, rather than just a wolf. And he is big. Brought to life by monster creator Master Rick Baker, this construction set a new standard that to this day is a challenge to match. This is it. And a quick moment for an honorable mention in Mr. Baker's case. It is another of his creations in Michael Jackson's music video, Thriller of 1983, where MJ himself turns into a were-cat or were-panther. Thank you, Master Baker. Retorno del Hombre Lobo, or Night of the Werewolf, 1981. Paul Nash returns as the werewolf once again. Surprise. What's new? Some different tones and fur? Its coverage? Not enough for the roaring 80s, that's for sure. Sonidoro, 1981. If you thought the previous werewolf was unimpressive, you may consider this one simply unacceptable. Although this essentially is not a werewolf movie, and his presence is short, whereas in the previous films it wasn't. The Howling, 1981. And here is the other, or main, wolfie you may have been waiting for. The werewolves here are gorgeous. Upright, standing monstrosities complete with digitigrade legs. The humanoid hybrid beast is finally here with long fur, ears, claws, and canines. Humanity temporarily absent. The design and proportions may not be perfect, but looking back at how far we've come, one must offer the Howling a bow and howl in reverence. Well done, monster creator Rob Bottin. And we cannot continue without shouting out this novel-based movie's usage of early CGI techniques. The Monster Club 1981. Is this some kind of joke? Well, actually, this movie wasn't meant to be taken very seriously, but the Wolfman makeup here is subpar for the decade. Though, on the other hand, at least he has some character. To any monster club. The Munster's Revenge, 1981. Here we not only have Eddie Munster, but this Wolfman, representing our furred friends. The guest Wolfman is nothing special and Eddie looks, well, all right. Being more grayed out suits him well. Wolfen, 1981. It hasn't been long since the werewolf has been portrayed in full wolf form. So here we are again. This movie can easily be regarded as not a werewolf movie. But in any case, I would say the wolves, or supposed wolves, appear the wolfiest yet when comparing to all previous canine actors and actresses. Buenas noches, Señor Monstro, 1982. Actually, for what the movie is, the Wolfman is very clean and a good representation of the previous decade's creations. While decent, it is not invocative of anything new. Cazador de Demonios, or Demon Hunter, 1983. Technically not a werewolf, but a Nahual, which is a shapeshifter of Mesoamerican folklore that has the ability to change beyond the form of human, often into forms of animals. Therefore, the similarities, especially with this form, are justified enough to have this beastie featured here. Impressive design? Certainly not, but the monster isn't shown in enough clarity to ruin its moments. La Bestia y la Espada Magica or The Beast and the Magic Sword, 1983. A werewolf in ancient Japan. What an idea! The protruding brow ridges and extra fur add a little to his individuality among others like him that we've seen, but aesthetically all in all just another wolfman at this point. Conquest, 1983. Among some humanoid wolfy beasties, we also have a full wolf form werewolf here as well, as usual utilizing an actual animal. The monster effects are hardly believable and the facial articulation poor. Chaos, 1984. A husband acts like a werewolf. How many women must have dealt with that? For better or for worse? Anyhow, another case of clinical lycanthropy, so no thrilling visuals here. Leviathan, or Monster Dog, 1984. Featuring rock star Alice Cooper, the werewolf is barely visible for as low budget as the design is. It's certainly a pro for the scene. She, 1984. Humans with fangs. 
Nothing to get excited about. Tales of the Third Dimension, 1984. It seems we have another one of those full canine werewolves here whose appearances are limited to a shadow silhouette and some quick practical effect shots of the face, back and of the especially pathetic paws. At least they took the effort to go special effect rather than dog actor. The Company of Wolves, 1984. And here we have just that, wolves. Full wolf, werewolf forms. But the gem here that is rarely mentioned among other 80s werewolf movie greats are the transformation scenes. Not bad at all. Hard Rock Zombies, 1985. Is that a wig? Is it supposed to be wearing a wig? Well anyway, a skunky style wolfman. I like the color scheme and that's mostly it. Actually, if this guy could have arrived 20 years earlier, that would have been quite awesome. Howling 2, Your Sister's a Werewolf. 1985. Unfortunately, Howling 2 has some satisfactory werewolves and some that are very subpar. A sad, bad movie continuation. But at least it doesn't take itself seriously. And that just may be the best thing about it. Kyuketsuki Hanta D, or Vampire Hunter D, 1985. For monster lovers out there, there are some excellent scenes in this anime. And that said, the werewolf is glorious with the fat negative of having a very, very short screen time. But he's totally big and bad to the bone. Lady Hawk, 1985. And another werewolf movie featuring the full wolf form with real canine actors. Silver Bullet, 1985. A great werewolf film with a werewolf whose features may be comparable to a bear's or were bear's, but all in all, the conception is fine if not good or even great, and with an almost adequately satisfying amount of screen time. Teen Wolf 1985. Finally the concept done right again. It's been a while. A wolf boy and man that are clean, aesthetically pleasing yet horrorless, created with evident quality. What do you monsterites think of Werewolf Daddy? An explanation is probably long overdue. The Adventures of a Two Minute Werewolf, 1985. For what one would expect, the practical effects on Wolf Boy here are really not bad. The design or aesthetics of it are not my cup of blood, but it sure appears as though a good amount of effort went into it. I'd say an improved approach would yield an actual Wolf Boy rather than this more aged, wolfy representation of him. Hmm, two minutes as a werewolf. That could be interesting. The Midnight Hour, 1985. A full furred bodysuit and passable facial makeup. Well, actually, that face isn't terrible at all. Although, was keeping his shoes on while in full transformed form really the best choice? Transylvania 6 5000, 1985. Appearing to be an even more furred version of Teen Wolf, but so much so that the character seems to get lost within. Looking like, but being unlike Chewbacca due to overall quality, I think some mouth and lip practical effects would have helped to complete this ensemble. Yes, Dead Time Stories, 1986. A wolf man with an apish sort of facial fur layout and somewhat full-bodied practical effects with clothing intact. Haunted Honeymoon, 1986. A horror comedy featuring a well-groomed, unimposing wolfman. Like if you agree, but leaving the bare exposed skin around the eyes is fine, but it should as a minimum be of slightly different color tone or have sparse or shorter hairs there to help it better blend with the surrounding fur. A Canadian Werewolf in Hollywood, 1987. A short film that features an appealing transformation and what a silhouette teases to be a very nice hulking werewolf, but we never get to see this full form exposed. El Aullido del Diablo. Howl of the Devil, 1987. Surprisingly, the appearance of the Wolfman is very brief here. He's a somewhat rugged one, but absolutely nothing innovative here. Howling 3, 1987. A lot of ridiculousness going on here with maybe one good, not great, design. Oh yeah, and a scene that you may never experience again in movie history. There's a reason why this is also known as Howling 3, The Marsupials. La Croce delle Sette Pietre, or Cross of the Seven Jewels, 1987. This could quite possibly be the worst werewolf or wolfman creation for the decade and in some respects even beyond that. All in all, this Italian flick isn't to be taken seriously and so there's no reason to be overly harsh and so with that, let's move on. Red Riding Hood, 1987. Full wolf werewolf form played once again by an actual canine. I do hope all these animals got a handsome reward for their efforts. Teen Wolf 2, 1987. 
Teen Wolf also? Well, maybe, but this beastie falls quite short of Michael J. Fox's, and even as a standalone, the work here lacks the quality and character to really help it stand out in this wild decade. The Monster Squad, 1987. Monsters gotta stick together. This brisk wolfman with eyes spaced out may look a little odd at first, but not being just another version of all those universal wolfmen we've seen, I'm a bit fond of him. Fright Night Part 2, 1988. Appropriate acting and ugly, but appearing under a Fright Night title, that just may not be enough. Fuller bodied would be nice, and not just that, but better face, more articulation, details, just quality. There's a reason why his appearances are so brief. Howling 4, The Original Nightmare, 1988. All right, Howling Milking, what do you have for us this time? Actually, that looks freaking awesome. Main and only negatives. Obviously, the mobility versatility is very limited and his screen time presence very short, but that's also how these two can work hand in hand for a more positive overall effect. But for the concept and appearance alone, this truly monstrous werewolf gets an A plus from me. Lone Wolf, 1988. From the brief visuals we get, he's the becoming more and more middle ground between Wolfman and full-fledged werewolf. He's cool looking but lacks a few features that would make him more memorable. And that's about all that really needs to be said here. Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf, 1988. Shaggy becomes a werewolf. That's really it. A werewolf Shaggy. No spice, no major loss of control, not even a size difference. And, no mistaking it, it's Shaggy as a werewolf. A totally missed animator's opportunity. Waxwork, 1988. The complete stiff job other than the ears is a major negative for this one as the actual look is pretty sweet, other than that oversized cranium. But come on, even the eyelids are part of the mask and not the actors and hence they stay squinted the entire time. Howling 5, The Rebirth, 1989. Let's see if the effects can live up to the previous howlings here. Well, for starters, there is certainly less werewolf content here, and the bits of which we do get a glimpse looks big and powerful, but wait! Did they forget about his legs or planned on not having them filmed? Is this just bad design? This monster seriously needs to do some squats. My Mom's a Werewolf, 1989. I must say, I like the aesthetics of the mask's design, but seriously now, there is no more facial movement present than you could do with a $10 mask. And considering the amount of screen time these beasties get due to the nature of the movie, they are awfully unbelievable. Really unfortunate seeing how much time and good effort was spent throughout the movie to get to this point. Night Shadow, 1989. Virtually the best one could do with a werewolf of this type on a low budget. It has the common flaws among such films, but it does win in being a cool monster and holding some individuality of its own during this real turn point of an era. Meridian, 1990. The decade begins with this Beauty and the Beast type romance that features a rather mellow, very furry, well, creature. For is it canine enough to be considered a true werewolf? Howling 6, The Freaks, 1991. Here we are greeted by this semi-hairy beast man. He's certainly not as offensively bad as some howling werewolves of the past, but he's also nothing extraordinary. And being of a werewolf franchise, special effects in these movies should be much more innovative. Shout out to those digitigrade legs. The Runestone, 1991. Hua. Not too wolfish, but surely monstrous. We've got horns, gigantic canines, and a rather large head. More movable features on a mask would definitely add to the effect here. Overall, nice work on the practical efforts of the whole design. Werewolf or Werehog, what do you think fits this fella better? Bram Stoker's Dracula, 1992. A respectable movie in production, and so our monster is as anticipated in quality. It's certainly a different take, and like it or leave it, it makes sense within the context of vampire, bat, and wolf. Mad at the Moon, 1992. What seems the most impressive about the long bearded wolfman here is his hairy, darkened arm. And well, that doesn't say much. Colmillos El Hombre Lobo, 1993. Not bad at all. A werewolf this good in a lesser known film should be shown more, and that's a rare case. Full Eclipse, 1991. Here we have a rather large, hunched black werewolf. The practical effects are good, not great, with a face covered with some bear-like features.
The Nightmare Before Christmas, 1993. The flannel-shirted, pantless werewolf here is fun. He's in fully werewolf form, albeit with a tinge of ratiness and that design of the muzzle. Lesser waning of it would have probably remedied that and even added to the belligerent look. Plenilunio, 1994. The CGI to reality implication is bad. The design, great. I like seeing the different color tones, such as on the fur and skin. A respectable effort for a low budget in 1994. Wolf, 1994. Early on in the film, we have some real canines and this practical effect wolf. A very memorable werewolf movie, the wolfmen here are light and wolfy effects, but the acting largely makes up for it. A must-see for werewolf fans. What say you, beloved monsterites? Project Metal Beast, 1995. The werewolf here is brutal, full-bodied, and thick. Due to having some skin grafted onto it that later solidified into a hard alloy, it became even fiercer. Glowing red eyes, an even darker hue, and spine-like furs protruding from behind its head give us quite an original monster that justified the theme of the film's title. So metal. The Howling, New Moon Rising, 1995. A terrible howling release if werewolf content is what you seek. Not only is the creature briefly shown, but the creation uninspired, unoriginal, uninventive, and unrealistic. What a truly pathetic money grab leeching off the howling title. Bad Moon, 1996. If full, hybrid, crazed bipedal werewolf is what you seek, and maybe the 80s hadn't quite provided it for you, then Bad Moon may just be the solution you crave. The werewolves here are viciously gorgeous, intimidating with excellent practical effects. Not only is this werewolf great, but the movie very enjoyable. Whether it's the relatability of the plot itself or the aesthetic aesthetics and visuals of the monster. This movie is a must-watch for any wolfy fan out there. Werewolf, 1996. This movie features both the more feral form werewolf as well as the wolfman werewolf version. The former being of more than just okay design, though largely lacking in effects quality and realism. The wolfman, on the other hand, was actually pretty well executed apart from the atrocious acting, which is by far the film's lowest point. Wilderness 1996, the first shapeshifter film in the decade to feature the wolf full form with this animal actor. A good looking canine too. An American Werewolf in Paris, 1997. With intentions of thriving upon the success that was An American Werewolf in London, this film lacks in many of the points that made the 80s predecessor such a classic. But it is indeed the first werewolf film to go full CGI special effects on our adored monster. The quality of the effects themselves were poor, maybe even deprived when comparing to other films of this year, and the monster's design itself seemed a little awkward with a a somewhat unappealing face structure. Lycanthropo, El Asesino de la Luna Llena, or Lycanthropus, The Moonlight Murders, 1997. A Spanish film that features this very 1970s wolfman. Oh, and I'm sure you'll just love hearing this. It stars Paul Nashi, though certainly not at his or in his best. Tale of the Urban Werewolf, 1997. A very low budget film, and for what it is, the werewolf is not that bad at all. Probably better than many films with quadruple the budget, though where it seriously hits low is the production and direction itself. The Creeps, 1997. As with the other monsters in this film, the wolfman here is little. That is, if you can even really call him a wolfman or werewolf. His features appear more akin to those of a vampire or a bat monster rather than wolf. Lycanthrophobia, 1998. A short film with some questionable clinical lycanthropy at play. Barely worth a mention here, really. The Werewolf Reborn, 1998. Here we have a low budget attempt at a werewolf and wolfman cross. Really, the conception isn't all that bad, though. It's an acceptable mix of human and beast. The Wolves of Cromer, 1998. This. Oh, and they have wolf tails. Fans are more than welcome to share more on this one below. Eyes of the Werewolf, 1999. This one's bad. The werewolf's head sitting atop the actor's head here, Godzilla style, just looks wrong. At least it looks like the film was probably a blast to make. Lycanthrope, 1999. Very unoriginal design for the era. Even the transformation is another attempt at copying the famed work of Rick Baker in An American Werewolf in London. All in all though, the werewolf is nicely wild, rugged, and monstrous. Rage of the Werewolf, 1999. 
Wouldn't be a bad low-budget werewolf design if the face were just bigger. I was a dog. The Wolfman, 1999. This is quite a uniquely made, very short film. A 3D animation taking on 2D traits, featuring a funky werewolf to boot. Alvin and the Chipmunks meet the Wolfman. 2000. What better way to start this modern age than with an animation? The Wolfman looks good, nice and thick, with an outfit barely struggling to stay on, yet suiting him rather well. Ginger Snaps, 2000. What can I say? I love the monstrous Canis-type werewolves here. That plus just being a great flick makes it no wonder why there are so many fans of Ginger Snaps. Must see. Oh, and why I like this werewolf so much? The sinewy body lacking in much fur, and that frightening face. Oh my! Monster Mash, 2000. The Wolfman werewolf here is nothing special. It's not particularly monstrous or unique. I'd want more from such a title. Vampire Hunter D, Bloodlust, 2000. Now this werewolf is awesome. Monstrous? For sure. Vampire Hunter D did it again, and this time, double-mouthed. Blood of the Werewolf, 2001. Very low budget with what appears to be a partial mask work. If you're surprised to see this in the 21st century, don't be. Plenty more to come. Le Pacte de Loup, also known as Brotherhood of the Wolf, 2001. This French movie doesn't exactly feature a werewolf, though the theme is very strong within. I just know that if this film weren't added here, I'd hear about it in the comments. Let's just deem this beastie a permanent monstrous canis, for now. Miss Werewolf, 2001. And what did I tell you with that previous very low budget film? Just when you thought we wouldn't mention even lower budgeted movies, here you go. Not just that, but even less inspired. Wolf Girl, 2001. Obviously higher in budget, and the Wolf Girl looks... good. A lady with lots of facial hair. The best part? It's the third female werewolf thus far already. Hence it's great to see the decade sharing equal love so early on. Bites The Werewolf Chronicles, 2002. Back we go to low budget. Although in this case, I will say, though stiff and obvious, that mask is kinda cool. Dog Soldiers, 2002. Another werewolf must-see classic. Great monsters here. These werewolves come with a rather slender form underneath the shoulder chest region, but love them or hate them, it's a rather stylistic, unique look. Anubis, anyone? Lycanthropin, 2002. A man thinking he's become a werewolf. The first of these feral man type stories in the 2000s era. The Feral Man, 2002. And here we have our second clinical lycanthropy case. Seemingly even lower in budget, definitely lesser in rating. Wolves of Wall Street, 2002. So here we have a whole other level of feral man slash woman. I'd say a semi-hominid type of creature. Refer to our types of werewolves video for terms used here. These people are beyond just believing they are lycanthropes. They embody some such actual characteristics, which adds just that little to the entertainment of the lore. Big Fish, 2003. Danny DeVito going full wolf form. Enough said. Good movie. Chimera, also known as The Werewolf Cold Chronicles Chimera, 2003. We don't see much of the creature in this small project, but we do know it has white fur and black claws. Dark Wolf, 2003. There's a mix of CGI and practical effect werewolf here. The CGI portion straggling far behind the practical ones in quality. Actually, at times they are bad enough to run the film completely to the ground. The female's looking alright. Dense Fear, 2003. An obvious lower-end budget production, but it seems no expense provided was spared on the werewolf. Not bad. Exhumed, 2003. These weird, long-eyebrowed creations are, well, ugly. And not the good kind, either. Elastic Man, 2003. This Filipino film features a very monstrous and very furry wolfman. It's nothing remarkable, but it's nice to see the love of this creature spreading internationally. Space Wolf, 2003. Make of the title what you will. All I can say is the wolfy here is quite the squatchy one. Yes, Bigfoot with a maw full of gnarly fangs. The Tenement, 2003. Some cheap practical effect work here. Could be worse. Tomb of the Werewolf, 2003. Paul Nashi. Does he ever 
give up. Obviously not, nor does the aged Wolfman theme he embodies. Underworld, 2003. Ah, the lichens. Something a little different here played out by some CGI and some practical. All in all, high budget work, full of buff beasties and adrenaline. What can I say? They look great. Werewolf Tales, 2003. And here we have it. Let me ask you, Monsterites. Is this enough for you, or does it depend on the movie's quality and plot? Let me know. Curse of the Wolf, 2004. Utilizing a mask with a permanently open mouth, a faux fur coat that's not even tucked into the pants, but hangs about like a jacket and something obviously not part of the body. Everything here screams not only low budget, but low effort as well. Is it forgivable? Evil Deeds, 2004. Another movie with a much better title than The Werewolf Within, and in this case, it's not even a great title. Ginger Snaps 2, Unleashed. 2004. A bit different, but still a cool werewolf design when comparing to the original Ginger Snaps. It's also quadrupedal, but with more fur and wolfish face. Still pretty awesome, especially for a second installment. Ginger Snaps Back, The Beginning, 2004. And here's the third installment. A bit of a different film than the first two, but it sure has some great stuff in it, such as more werewolves. Appearance-wise, they follow up well to Ginger Snaps 2, and may even sport more design details. Admirable work. Halloween Town 3, Halloween Town High, 2004. We got the nose, the long hair, and... Okay, those ears look really bad. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, 2004. A full CGI work of quality here. This being more or less part of a family movie series, the werewolf is less intimidating and robust, but that didn't take away from the realism behind the design. I Trevulti del Terror, also known as The Three Faces of Terror, 2004. Other than the costume being a bit stiff, the concept looks wicked and I'd like to see more. How fun would it be to wear that at Monster Palooza? Also, nice to jittergrade touch there. Kibakichi, 2004. From Italy, we teleport to Japan, and from werewolf to wolfman. But don't mistake me, he's just as intense as one. Overall, not bad, but something we could have seen 30 years prior. Kibakichi 2, 2004. So soon after Kibakichi, there's not much in an improvement on the creature design, although we do have a female werewolf here. It's just sort of fun watching them duke it out. Roma Santa, The Werewolf Hunt, 2004. From Japan, we travel west to Spain. Nothing more than a full wolf form here. At least a bit of effort was put into the transformation, though. The Lunar Pack, 2004. The wolf people here are certainly not groundbreaking, but for an hour-long, cheap production, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better effects work. The Werewolf Solution, 2004. As a comedy short created for a competition, there is not much negative you can really say about the monster here. I mean, at least its lower jaw actually moves. Obviously, it falls very short of many higher budget creations. Van Helsing, 2004. A popular fan favorite. The werewolves of Van Helsing are ferocious, unstoppable, well-designed creatures. Although fully CGI, the presentation is quality and takes full advantage of the technology. To this point and probably still beyond, details such as facial and other muscle movements have not yet been presented to this level practically. But again, beyond that, the werewolves just look right. Huzzah! Cursed, 2005. There are fairly clean, big, bad, fuzzy werewolves in this one, and they look better than all right. Also, Cursed gets some extra points for this werewolf dog. Mexican Werewolf in Texas, 2005. Quite the monstrous werewolf here, and considering the context, I have a feeling it may be Chupacabra inspired. Not bad for a TV film. O Coronel Yolo Bizomen, 2005. Though the werewolf scene is quite brief and the CGI not at its best, the beast looks crazed with a touch of human. Nice. The Beast of Bray Road, 2005. He's a beefy wolfy, but something is just lacking here, and cool as green eyes can be, they only add to the phoniness here. The Brothers Grimm, 2005. 
We have a full wolf form CGI creature here that has a great rabid look to it. The transformation sequence is pretty unique too. The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, 2005. You may have to pay extra attention to capture the canine human hybrids here, and overall they're decent. Oh, and there are talking wolves too. The Werewolf Cold Chronicles, Monsters of the Purple Twilight, 2005. The scenes here are very brief and the creature itself very poorly done. The what appear to be legs of the werewolf seem to be shaped of only a few polygons, effort at its least. The worst horror movie ever made, 2005. The effects practical but not much better than the previous flicks. Umlo Bizome na Amazonia, also known as A Werewolf in the Amazon, 2002. I appreciate the nostalgia and the look here and the slight advancement such as the contacts. Nothing great for the decade, but a good wolfman nonetheless. Also, Paul Nash. Vietnam, 1969, 2005. Ooh, I like what I'm seeing. Okay, so as soon as we see more of it, it gets worse. But I really commend the efforts that went into this very small project. Way ahead of probably dozens of other bare-boned finance films listed here. I'd like to see what these creators would do with some serious cash. Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the War Rabbit, 2005. Just a fun insert here which won't be receiving much time due to it being a were rabbit not wolf. And let it be known there are many other films out there with were hybrids of other animals such as tigers and they will not be listed here. Werewolf in Bangkok 2005. So it's a wolfman here but he looks pretty awesome. That is until you see it for prolonged periods. And then you have this which is just silly. Wild Country, 2005. Pretty interesting quadrupedal take here along with this very endearing pup. Ah, well done. An erotic werewolf in London, 2006. Full adult erotic flick here with costume design no worse or better than one probably would expect. In the nature of it all, the werewolves aren't the only fake looking things here. Big Bad Wolf, 2006. A fully costumed freaky wolfman here and I love him. Let's just gawk at this one for a moment. Bloods vs. Wolves, 2006. Yeah, what would you expect with a title like that? At least the design isn't contrived on these hominid type werewolves. Creature of the Creature Night, of the night. 2006. A crazed low par creation. Probably better we don't see more of it. Full Moon Massacre, 2006. Oh no, we can't allow for much more screen time for this here than just this. What's with the eye? Fail. Horrors of War, 2006. Hmm, barely any wolf traits here. Lycan Colony, 2006. Terrible quality movie. So bad that comparing the werewolf to it, it's actually not all that bad. Lycanthropy, 2006. People believing themselves to be werewolves. Or are they werewolves? Hmm, anyways, nothing to see here. Skinwalkers, 2006. Finally, a movie with this title and the humanoid monsters within are really quite commendable. Should I say I'm impressed? I do like them for sure. Great work on both genders. The Feeding, 2006. Hmm, I like the size, but my enthusiasm quickly dropped seeing how stiff the mask was. Too bad. Totally awesome, 2006. Just another low budget wolf person. Underworld Evolution, 2006. In this second Underworld installment, we have not only lichens, but true werewolves, true, totally rad, superb werewolves. That makes me question, if we were to nitpick here, where do you monsterites think improvements could be made? Also, as far as Underworld goes, lichens or werewolves, what say you? Werewolf in a Woman's Prison, 2006. Overall, not a bad costume design at all, especially for this level of film. Could do without the glowing eyes though. Wolfica, 2006. Not much can be found on this one, but really, need we see more? Estimated budget, $5,000. Blood and Chocolate, 2007. Full wolf form, shapeshifters here. Lots of canines in this one, folks. Cold-Blooded, 2007. Just goofy. Well, the werewolves themselves are just poor, uninspired attempts. Thank me later for saving you the time. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, 2007. Full dog form. We're dog here. Hellboy Animated, Blood and Iron, 2007. Decent monster here, but nothing special as far as animation or design. 
Hybrid, 2007. Necessary note to be made, a story of mental lycanthropy here and transplanted wolf eyes. Nature of the Beast, 2007. Clearly not top-notch, but really the design work here is nice. Necroville, 2007. Wolf people? Let's not waste our time. The Lycanthrope, 2007. Not much visible, low budget, probably best to keep it so. Trick or Treat, 2007. Absolutely awesome scene in this one. If only we could see the werewolves more and more of them. In short, wonderful, true werewolf forms here. Werewolf, the Devil's Hound, 2007. Low budget, seen worse, and seen many better. Animals, 2008. The effects here are weak, but we could add a point or two for originality. Curse of the Wolf, 2008. Nothing impressive here. Mask and full body costume. Design-wise, it's okay. Never Cry Werewolf, 2008. Great looking, very dark werewolf. The quality of the effects aren't way up there, but the conception and happenings in the movie totally make up for it. What do you think? Is this a must-see? Ski Wolf, 2008. Seems like another tightly financed, small fun project. Not a terrible Wolfman mask, but starting to get tired of seeing all these lowly attempts. The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, 2008. The Wolfie is looking good here in both his practical and CGI forms. I wouldn't expect any less from this level of production. I think with him I would have liked to have seen some kind of break in the monotony of the fur. Maybe some stripes or slight coloration shifts. Twilight, 2008. And what many have either been waiting for or not been waiting for, either way the series has begun. Sorry, no wolf forms in this one yet, just the counterpart human forms. Blood Moon Rising, 2008. Among the hominid forms here, we do have this fully furred wolf person. I take that back, she's certainly not fully furred, just has lots of long hair on her freaky head. Cirque de Freak, The Vampire's Assistant, 2009. Nice overall work here, and although I like the difference in the face's appearance, I don't find it to be a very attractive look in any sense. Maybe it's the choice of keeping the humanoid ears and forward-facing eyes. This may be a good thing though, plus the amounts of effort that went into this do shine through. Dark Moon Rising, 2009. Here we have a lichen-looking werewolf with a lot of CGI involved. The creature sculpt is actually pretty good, although it lacks in the animation and rendering department. With a $3 million supposed budget, what do you think? Good, fair, or bad? Death Hunter, Werewolves vs. Vampires, 2009. Another full CGI work here under a very limited budget. Again, the sculpt slash design itself is good, it's in everywhere else that it lacks. Hammer of the Gods, 2009. We do have some variety in this one. Overall, I think I would have liked to have seen the hybrids bulkier and more intimidating. The maws are looking good. The pants remaining on took more away from looking terrorizing. And the CGI Fulcanus form was poor. But this is, after all, Vikings versus werewolves. So should one really complain much? Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. 2009. A hominid type werewolf here, meaning not much to distinguish it from regular human apart from some behaviorisms, attributes, and visual features which are usually somewhere upon the face. All in all, a good example of a hominid. House of the Wolfman, 2009. This wolfman looks wonderful, especially in this classic black and white render. He's rough, he's tough, and the movement act on all fours is great. Neo Wolf, 2009. A hominid here with some facial differences such as pronounced ridges, fangs, and a gnarly nose. The Haunted World of El Superbisto, 2009. A brown animated basic werewolf here. Rob Zombie, if there's a next time, you owe us more. The Twilight Saga, New Moon, 2009. So here we first see the shapeshifted forms. They are fully CGI, giant or dire wolves. The quality is good, but it would still be great seeing some in practical effect format. Timo Rose's Beast, 2009. Well, it's a beastly man. Type of werewolf, hominid. Nothing to howl at here. Underworld Rise of the Lycans, 2009. Lots of wonderful lichens and true werewolves here. Gorgeous and ferocious. Well done, Underworld artists. War Wolves, 
2009. Borderline hominid wolf people here. Especially the female considering how close to wolf her face is with a smooth pale skin. Next. Werewolf Fever, 2009. Confusing Wolfman appearance with actually a huge cranium. It's different. Not sure if we should spend more time on it or less. Nah, we must reserve it for the best of the best. This list is enormous. Werewolf Trouble, 2009. Wolfman. Well, for a seven minute short, not too bad. Let's move on. Werewolves, The Dark Survivors, 2009. Somewhat grungy look on the Wolfman here. This is a fake documentary and you know how monster renders get in those. Yeah, not good. But this one, not so bad. Wolf's Bane, 2009. Concept works, a pleasing overall werewolf. The quality in the costume slash practical effects is clearly not there, hence brief footage is present. And well, that's the way to go. Zombie Werewolves Attack. 2009. And yes, there is actually an exclamation mark in the title. The flick is full of wolf person rubber masks, some that are zombified a little, and cheap effects that are decently presented for what they are. 13 Hours, also known as Nightwolf. 2010. So this may be a great example of a monstrous werewolf. Wolf traits here are diluted, but an interesting and well done overall creation. Pretty original. Despicable Me, 2010. A very brief comedic scene here. Nonetheless, an attractive stylistic design. Dylan Dog, Dead of Night, 2010. A modest, good looking wolfman here. A bit evocative of a lion or beast man. Going Postal, 2010. Looks like a quick CGI generic wolfie. Nothing catching, nothing tremendous. Half Moon, 2010. An obvious costume, but with nice werewolf features. Lupole du la Bête, also known as the Hair of the Beast, 2010. A lot of CGI involved with the werewolves here. Overall, I don't feel the general silhouette of the creature is that effective. Maybe longer wolf-like ears would have helped. Not bad, nor great. Lost Boys, The Thirst, 2010. Unfortunately, not much is shown here, just a hint. Let's see if a future movie reveals more, if there even will be one. Red, Werewolf Hunter, 2010. A fairly low-budget CGI werewolf here. It's not worse than any seen previously on this scale, nor than those still to come. At least the animation is decent. The Attack of the Indian Werewolf, 2010. Curly, tacky, totally artificial and cheap. Come on! The Boy Who Cried Wolf, 2010. It's always great to see a movie show a great passion for their wolfy work and design. I like the added characteristic, such as her otherworldly blue eyes. Commendable, especially for a TV movie. The Twilight Saga, Eclipse, 2010. There doesn't seem to be any visual advancement with the werewolf forms here when comparing to the previous Twilight film. That's probably due to the work process's time frame being within the same period or shortly thereafter. The Wolfman, 2010. This remake of the classic Wolfman utilizing technology of today is simply a must see. It is a revitalization done right, particularly on the Wolfmen. Great actors, awesome werewolves, packed with great force, digitigrate legs, and beastliness. Vampires suck. 2010. This Twilight mockery doesn't feature much in relevance here, other than this Chihuahua. Elfie, the Little Werewolf, 2011. Always interesting to see a pup creation. This one's obviously geared toward a younger audience, but nonetheless, not bad. Harry Potter and the Deadly Hallows, Part 2, 2011. We have a return of this character, Fenrir, who appears a little grimier than before, probably more so due to the context here rather than design update. Le Contes de la Nuit, also known as Tales of the Night, 2011. This is a simple stylistic animation of really just silhouettes. The supposed werewolf? Visually nothing very interesting. Lobos de Arga, also known as Game of Werewolves, 2011. Tons of beastly wolfmen and they look good. If you've never heard of this movie and you're a werewolf fan, then you have to see this. Again, not perfect, but great looking muscle mass packed monsters with crazy canines. Monster Brawl, 2011. A playful movie with an okay wolfman. I like the mane he's got going, but considering what the makeup has to go through, there just have to be limits to quality details. Red Riding Hood, 2011. 
full, very big CGI wolf here with a bit of a wild stylistic look to it that looks great. Very cool dark creature. The Howling Reborn, 2011. While some scenes take way too easy of a shortcut, the werewolf design and finish is pretty good. Now as a modern horror, it has a theme that I'm not a fan of personally, and which is too common in scary movies, but as for the work that went into the monsters, I'd have to give it some praise, especially when comparing to some of the very weak or just strange efforts that went into the previous Howlings, which were all produced over 15 years prior. And I have to say, I simply love the aesthetics and the black and white conception, with the dark dark skin tone and white fur. Also, those eyes look great. The Night Shift 2011. What is this, 1976? A bit of a nostalgic feel here for sure, but the work looks too dated and just uninspiring. I do like those ears though. The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn Part 1, 2011. Just more of the big CGI wolfies that we've come to expect from the series. Nothing new. The Cabin in the Woods, 2011. An excellent werewolf here. I only have one gripe. We just don't see it enough. There's some great footage of it on the net, but if only we did have more of it in the film. Well done with this monster and many others in the film. Therion, 2011. An interesting short film, but in terms of monstrosities, there's nothing much here. Welcome to Hawksford, 2011. Another short film, although this one does feature quite the monster. Questionable whether actual lycanthrope, but it surely has a monstrous werewolf form. Pretty cool. Wolf Town, 2011. Another film that may have been added largely due to my generosity as it features highly intelligent wolves. More of one for you wolf fans out there. A Werewolf Boy, 2012. And with this title, we return to complete relevance. Nothing too monstrous here. Wolfboy's appearance is very reminiscent of the Cats musical. Big Top Scooby-Doo, 2012. Actually, the conception was better than I expected. Sure, it's stylistic cartooning, but the werewolf is a good-looking werewolf. That's really all I could hope for here. Blood Moon, 2012. Hmm, this werewolf feels familiar. It's certainly better than what I was expecting of this short. Again, with a $5,000 listed budget, if this wasn't a reused suit from, say, The Boy Who Cried Werewolf, then I really commend the work that went into this one. I'd only love to see more. Dark Shadows, 2012. Interesting mix of CGI and actress here. It's a nice balance, and a wolf girl looks good. Dense Fear, Bloodline, 2012. Some inspiration here seems obvious, but taken as a whole, not bad, especially as far as design goes. Hotel Transylvania, 2012. Some cute and funny situations here with the numerous pups. A more animalistic approach rather than horrifying. Jack and Diane, 2012. The allegorical monster here is one of the craziest ones yet, and if it were to be classified as a werewolf, I'd certainly list it off as a monstrous werewolf. Love Bite, 2012. A good size wolfie here. Not necessarily on the edge of being shockingly frightening, but the CGI efforts were done well. Looks like it would be a fun pet to have. Okami Kodoma na Ameto Yuki, also known as Wolf Children, 2012. An anime featuring two wolf shapeshifters, presented within a family-friendly story. A film that may be appealing to the furry subculture. Strippers vs. Werewolves, 2012. Low budget as the title leads on, there was actually a fair bit of effort that went into creating all the wolf men and women here. The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, Part 2, 2012. And once again, no obvious improvements in the giant wolves here, but it is nice to see the good variety of them. Underworld Awakening, 2012. The lichens are looking great, as usual, in this installment. And then you have this one. A giant hybrid. The look is nothing appalling, but it isn't very dazzling either. It's well done, and I would have preferred a bit more... I don't know, sharp edges? Werewolf, The Beast Among Us, 2012. Excellent werewolf work here. Seeing again this great sort of conception, I would like to hear or read from you viewers. Would you prefer a tail on this beastie, or is it better off without one? Definitely one to include within the collection of top werewolf movies and top werewolves of movies ever. Battle Dogs, 2009. Be it good or bad, there's a bit of character to these four-legged or semi-four-legged beasties. They're fully CGI at times, looking pretty good quality-wise, at others, mediocre. Evil Deeds, 3, 2013. I hope it's not going to be getting any more low budget than this going forward. 
Feral, 2013. Okay, another low budget, but this one's a short film. Those are in a different category. The effects are meager and the amount slim. Hunger Unholy, 2013. It's okay for a several thousand dollar budget. Sheepskin, 2013. An interesting take on a guy being accused of being a werewolf. In the end, yes, he is one, and the concept is somewhat underwhelming. Too much of a furball and not enough outstretched hairless forms. Tales of Fear, 2013. An almost generic wolfman approach. Nothing striking. The Third Man, 2013. A 15-minute comedic short featuring this werewolf costume and, well, this werewolf. It's stiff, but at least it does look more real than the protagonist's mask. By not much, though. The Last Exit, 2013. It's hard to find more from this film, but with a $5,000 budget, I'm sure we're not missing out on much. The Mortal Instruments, City of Bones, 2013. We have some wild stuff in this one, among which is this crazed CGI wolf form. I like that ma. There's also the hominid, more human type in the film. Were. 2013. Now this one's a little different. The werewolf type here you could say is hominid or humanoid as far as the form, and there are bits there to spice it up a little for sure, but this film does it right. If you're open to seeing less of a monstrous or wolf-like werewolf, then this one comes recommended. Anselmi, the young werewolf, 2014. Nothing very monstrous to see in this Finnish production. Blood Moon, 2014. The werewolves are looking quite good in this one. Nice size, too. Get your pitchforks ready! <laughs> Bubba the Redneck Werewolf, 2014. Sure, a goofy concept and movie, but the wolfman makeup is somewhat commendable. It's not 80s Teen Wolf level quality, but it's still acceptable. Having a Drink, 2014. Not a bad looking wolf person couple here. A modest approach, but done with care. Late phases, 2014. Approaching a monstrous werewolf form here, meaning beyond looking like a human slash wolf hybrid, the effort that went into work here is certainly respectable. Like the look or not, it's unique and you can clearly feel the amount of passion that went into this project. Monster High, Frights Camera Action. 2014. A couple of characters here, primarily this one. A cutesy rendition, and beware, there will be more installments of Monster High. Now, Tree Anatoima, also known as When Animals Dream, 2014. As far as the supernatural form goes here, mostly human. Spring, 2014. An interesting film featuring something one would just not expect. A relating theme? Mostly just monstrous body changes, but it does deserve a mention. Torn, a shockumentary, 2014. Not much visible in this fake documentary. Werewolf Rising, 2014. We have a big, full fur suited werewolf here with a face of terror. I think I like those long, pointy ears. Werewolf Terror, also known as Iron Wolf, 2014. A werewolf in quality similar to the previous one, the more wolfish in appearance. Not bad, at least we have movable jaws. Gotta have those mobile jaws. What We Do in the Shadows, 2014. A well-done, funny, fake documentary on the lives of a group of vampires. The werewolves were surprisingly good. Seems the masks are single pieces, hence limited in function. But due to good filming timing, it's pretty unnoticeable. Even though the werewolf parts are brief, I believe many fans would appreciate the humor here. Check this movie out. Wolf Cop. 2014. Don't judge by the title here. It appears a lot of love went into this project. The makeup is done quite well and fits the character. During some scenes, it seems to be a little lacking, but that happens when you have a full made-up character appear as often as he does throughout the movie. Leave it to Canada to make this somewhat comedic film. Wolves, 2014. Excellent practical wolf people here. This is how it should be done. The fur is laid out well and not at random, and I adore the bright streaks on the female here. Top notch. This one deserves a big audience howl for sure. A werewolf in Slovenia, 2015. A werewolf mockumentary that features some weak, uninspired, quote-unquote, footage. As Fabulas Negras, also known as The Black Fables, 2015. A really wild, almost demonic werewolf here. Quality isn't the best, but the conception is just fun to look at. I like the bodywork here. Chronicles of the Ghostly Tribe, 
2015. Quite an awesome monster here. I appreciate the horny protrusions running down its spine and overall size and look. Nice to see the production of it taken seriously and with painstaking effort. Crying Wolf 3D 2015 Several werewolves here. The practical makeup isn't bad. It's a very wolfy approach and where it lacks most is probably in realism as an overall quality. But again, the efforts are not to be ignored. Dark Moon Rising 2015 The wolfmen here are pretty sweet. The lighting during their scenes is limiting so it's hard to nitpick here. Well done, Dark Moon Rising. Female Werewolf 2015. Apparently turning into a wolf form here, or a hybrid, not sure. The film is full of terrible slow down shots not worth spending much time on. Freaks of Nature 2015. A teen wolf here with a modest amount of FX done. Nothing terrible, but also nothing worthy of a great praise. Goosebumps 2015. A respectable work of CGI on the werewolf in the suitable for all ages film. The overall conception works and I appreciate the details such as the ripped sneakers remaining on the upper portion of the feet. Also, I'm pleased to see how much screen time he got. Hotel Transylvania 2, 2015. Very slight improvement on the Wolfies over the first installment here. Howl, 2015. Some people like them, some don't. The werewolves here are very ghoulish in appearance with legs being digitigrade in structure. The amount of work that went into the creatures here is undeniable and so the production is first rate. It's refreshing seeing something high budget done differently while highly financed. A respectable risk. Monster High, Boo York, Boo York. 2015. And here they are. If I were to classify, I would say hominid or barely more than. Open Season, Scared Silly. 2015. The werewolf in this family CGI flick looks kind of fantastic. I enjoy the exaggerated claws, size, and overall silhouette of him. It's nice to see how much work and passion went into the design. Huzzah! Arl Stein's Monsterville, Cabinet of Souls, 2015. Nothing astounding here, the work for what it is is well done, but then again, it isn't too much. Silver Hyde, 2015. A British low-budget production, featuring quite the werewolf design. It's not first-class quality, but we do have a monster. Not just makeup and contacts or mask, and I'm fine with that. Tales of Dracula. 2015. A tastefully monstrous wolfman design with an obvious problem. Not enough facial mobility. Too stiff. Tokyo Grand, Guignol. 2015. A wolfman here, but other than decently done, there's nothing too memorable about him. The transformation on the other paw, yeah. Viewer beware. Werewolves in Heat. 2015. Here we have a very humanoid hominid form. Dances with Werewolves. 2016. Some pretty cool wolf women here. Nothing over the top though. Or maybe not even near it. Little Dead Riding Hood. 2016. Design wise, the big werewolf here is not bad. Where it falls short is the final render and animation. The body's surface lacks believability by being overly smooth with overall low quality lighting. Add to this the rigid, unnatural motions, and you have a monster that falls very short in awing the audience. Monster High. Welcome to Monster High. 2016. Again, the usual here. Although it does appear the quality has been upped a bit. Over Time, 2016. An overall pretty good production. This Australian short features a wolfman design that, while not over the top, is captivating enough for what this is. I just want to see what happens next. She Wolf Rising, 2016. The work's not bad. For Werbat. But I mean, look at the effects, even on her chest. Uncaged, 2016. An okay wolfman here. But by this point in the timeline, I yearn for more. Another Wolf Cop, 2017. Definitely some odd and adult stuff featured in this one along with a female Wolfie as well. Wolf Cop himself doesn't look much different from the first installment. Ultimately, the body hair could go through a bit of grooming in order to look better and more natural. As Boas Maneiras, also known as Good Manners, 2017. In this French-Brazilian film, we have a wolf boy. Not the first of such, but this movie does it well, and very interestingly. The CGI creation itself is good, but I wouldn't say extraordinary in being convincing. Though I would like to see more to this one. Maybe some adult werewolves. The boy all grown up. 
Blood Red, 2017. The footage is brief and the werewolf, albeit more than just a costumed actor, still falls short of being believable and more so frightening. Obviously money was limited here, so I do appreciate the practical creation. Bone Hill Road, 2017. Some pretty awesome werewolf work in this one. The high points are more so on the design rather than overall quality. Look at the size of that noggin though. What a Halloween mask that would make. Carnivore, Werewolf in London, 2017. Similar in quality to the previous one, this werewolf is less believable. Hair of the Dog, 2017. A quality short film with a very brief werewolf scene. That said, it was better than those of most full-length low-budget flicks, with a realistic mix of visible skin and hair on the tissue. Lycan, 2017. A film utilizing living canines as the full wolf forms. Monster Family, 2017. A CGI movie that features this wolfy pup. A cute design, the tuft of hair on his head adds to the design's aesthetic and character. November, 2017. November features this full wolf shapeshifter form. The Monster Project, 2017. A found footage type film with quite a bit of craziness. The werewolf here looks very good. The filming style and intensity certainly adds to its demeanor. Underworld, Blood Wars, 2017. The lichens here seem a little lackluster. It could be us getting used to seeing them, or it could be due to some CGI takes of them in the movie. Whatever the case, this scene may just make up for that. And for more of the fans of the franchise, there is also this lichen dash Corvinus, strain hybrid in his enhanced form. Hmm, I think I would have preferred more of the practical approach here. Werewolves of the Third Reich, 2017. Hmm, full werewolf or half? I'm certainly not impressed with the effects in this one. The outstanding eye ridges of these masks to me was a very poor choice as it makes them look like just that. Face masks with open seams. Too bad. If applied better, they could have looked pretty decent. Zombilenium, 2017. Nothing outstanding in this French animated film. Just this stylistically clean, brawny, suited wolfman. Alpha Wolf, 2018. Alright, it's 2018, and with a title like that, let's see what we get. Well, we have fully costumed wolfmen, although they're not totally believable, their makeup is pretty cool. To be honest, I was expecting a little more. Betsy, 2018. A partially crowdfunded film, which is cool, but clearly nothing visually stunning here, which is not cool. Hominid for the most part. Fang, 2018. Not believable, but an awesome mask to wear out on Halloween. Therefore, not a failure, but for films, especially in this decade, I'm expecting more. Much more. Goosebumps 2, Haunted Halloween, 2018. So the first Goosebumps featured a great CGI werewolf, but here he is even more crisp and looks overall awesome. Excellent CG work went into the beasties here. The work behind this werewolf certainly deserves at least a small round of howls. Hotel Transylvania 3, 2018. Just more of the same from this one, with overall quality upped a little. Like Animator, 2018. Well, with a title like that, what did you really expect? For 2018, I sure did more, no matter the financing amount. Slice, 2018. A hominid slash wolfman, boring and uninspired in appearance. The Snarling, 2018. Something a little better here with the actual werewolf, but still largely lacking in quality. Come on! Wildling, 2018. A bit of a different take here on the werewolf legend. Don't be expecting anything too monstrous here. Among the Shadows, 2019. And here we are. 2019, make us proud. No, no, come on, no. no. High Moon, 2019. A TV movie with wolfmen that could have been created in the 80s. Late 70s, really. I wouldn't say they were done cheaply, but there is a reason a flick like this wouldn't be able to make it to the big screen. Monsterland 2, 2019. A respectable werewolf get up here and being the final movie on the list, thank you. As a final segment in year, I would like to explore possible films featuring werewolves coming in 2020. Take this list with a grain of salt, as not much detail has been provided on their production date or plot details. The Horrific Evil Monsters, an upcoming small project that features this obviously costumed character, although still an alright design though. Be Knighted. The Ghoulie Boys, Shiver, In the Lost Lands, The Savage Beast, 
Miss Clark, Werewolf Scouts, The Skin Trade, An American Werewolf in London. We probably won't be seeing this remake in 2020, but let's keep updated on this one and hope that at least it will get produced fairly soon. What werewolf movie are you looking forward to seeing? What would you like to see done that hasn't been done yet? I urge you to watch some of the many werewolf videos on this channel. Subscribe if you love monsters. Give a like and click that bell for the efforts. And I'll see you in the next one.